Hi, I'm Amelia, a professional dog trainer and behavioural specialist. In my brand new series, we'll be travelling across the UK to help pet parents in need. No matter what the behavioural problem is, I'm here to help. So today we're working with Noodle, who is an adorable nine-week-old Chihuahua puppy. And as you can see, he is tiny. Now, sometimes there are things you want to do a little bit different with a dog so small. So today we're going to be talking through three things that you can do to help your small breed puppy settle in, as well as three behaviours that you can get started with in terms of training. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do with a puppy this small is take into consideration how they see the world. Now, when you're this little, things can be really scary, even just normal things that we might not think about. So socialization looks slightly different. Now, a lot of the time you want to be really patient with your small breed puppy. Give them plenty of time to explore things and don't be surprised if they find things like people or new people coming into the house scary because that is pretty common and it is pretty normal. Giving them plenty of space to figure things out on their own and just really learn that the world isn't such a scary place is so, so important for them. What can you see? Where are you going? Are you backing up? Whoa. A really good exercise that I always recommend people do when they have a small breed puppy is to go around the house at their level. Yes, it might look a bit weird. You will have to get on the floor, but see the world from their perspective. What noises can you hear? What things can you see that might be intimidating or scary? Sometimes even things like the noise of your fridge or the washing machine or dishwasher can be really scary for a puppy this little. So seeing it from their perspective can help you to understand and set them up to be successful. And it's also good to not be surprised then if they're maybe nervous of the kitchen or they don't want to go in a certain room. It just allows you to understand how they perceive the world and then you can react accordingly and make sure that things aren't so scary next time, whether that means giving them a little treat or just giving them plenty of time and space to figure out the world on their own terms. The second thing you want to do with your small breed puppy is honestly to treat them and train them like a regular dog. And that's so, so important because so often people think that small dogs will be more tolerant or that they don't need training because they're little. But that couldn't be further from the truth. When they're this small, again, remember that things that other dogs might tolerate could potentially be scary. But also... We want to make sure that we're doing just as much for their mental well-being as we would a big dog or a dog that's any other size. So treating them just like any other dog is so important. That means not manhandling them all the time and grabbing them when they're not expecting it. It means socialising them properly and making sure they're getting exposure to loads of different situations, dogs, people, sights, sounds and smells. And again, making sure that you give them training and guidance right from day one. Oh, you are so cute. Later on in this video, we're going to come back to three behaviours that you can teach your puppy straight away. And those are things that will just really, really help. And often they're things that I would recommend everyone start with, with their puppies. So remember, treat your small breed puppy like you would any other breed. The third thing you want to do to really help your small breed puppy settle in is to be really respectful of their boundaries. Again, just like you would be with any other breed of dog, it's important to be respectful of your puppy. Often with smaller breeds, it can be tempting to just grab them and manhandle them and just carry them around everywhere. But we want to make sure that we're not teaching our puppy that we could come up out of nowhere and freak them out or spook them or scoop them up. Yes, it can be helpful to get them used to being held, but we want to do it in a positive and respectful way. If we teach our puppies this young that we're something to be afraid of, that's only going to do harm to our relationship. So it's really, really important to be respectful of that. And remember that if your puppy is uncomfortable with the situation, it's perfectly acceptable to take them out of it or maybe take a step back and look at what you're doing. One thing I really like to incorporate with any dog, but especially with a breed so small, is something we call consent testing. This is where we pause during an interaction and check that our puppy is still happy with what we're doing. So for example, if I was stroking Noodle right now, I could stop, take my hand away and see what he does. If he's looking at me expectantly like, hey, where have you gone? I was enjoying that. That's a really good sign that I can continue and that he's enjoying the interaction. If I was to take my hand away and maybe he moved himself away or he gave me a really clear signal that he wasn't enjoying it, then that's a good time to stop and leave him be. 
This also goes for things like picking them up. If we communicate to our dog that we're going to pick them up and almost ask for their permission. So if I reach out to him and say, can I pick you up before I pick him up? He's going to learn what that means. And that gives him a chance to opt in or out of the behavior. And that way, you know, if he doesn't want to be picked up, that's totally cool. We can leave him to it. We can not pick him up. And that will just help him to understand that we are safe and we're not scary. The same goes for sleeping. If you've ever heard the saying, let sleeping dogs lie, that couldn't be more true. It can be really tempting with small dogs, again, just to pick them up or move them, or maybe they're sleeping and you want attention. But remember, leave them be, let them sleep. You don't want your dog to start expecting scary things from you, whether that's being spooked or startled. And lots of dogs have a startle response as well, which means they're more prone to being afraid or showing aggression when they are sleeping and they get spooked awake. So we really don't want to do that and we want to leave our puppies be to just enjoy their rest time. And remember that rest is so, so important for puppies. So we really don't want to get in the habit of disturbing that and waking them up. So again, point number three is to respect our little dog's boundaries. Another thing I forgot to mention, but also really wanted to get into this video, is being really aware of your small breed puppy and where they are in the house. It's all too easy to have an accident and step on a puppy like this or trip over them. So it's really, really important that you know where your puppy is and you're really aware of what you're doing and not injuring them. It only takes one accident to cause lifelong problems. So some things that I find can help are one, just being really vigilant. Two, maybe having something like a bell on your puppy so that you can hear where they are. And if you can't supervise them and you're just pottering about the house, maybe you need to do chores or something like that, pop them away somewhere safe and secure, whether that is a crate or a playpen. Again, it's way better to be safe in this situation rather than to have an accident. Because again, one accident can cause lifelong problems. So be really, really careful about where your puppy is and where you're treading. If you're enjoying this video and you want to learn more about training your dog and dog behavior, then you might be interested in my training hub. It's an online membership where you'll get access to over 50 pre-recorded tutorials that you can work through on your own time. You'll also get access to all of our live workshops, previous workshops. You'll join our supportive community where you can share your issues, challenges, and even celebrate with us when things go well. You'll also get support from me directly because I'm pretty much in the app all the time. So all around, it is the best value training app on the market. So if you want to try it, you can sign up for a free trial where you'll get three days free. Check out the link in the description for more information. So now we're going to have a look at three behaviors or skills that we can teach our dog to get them set up. So naturally, one of the first things I like to do with puppies is teach them to respond to their name. This can be really helpful in general. Obviously, we want them to know when we need their attention, but it's also a really good skill to lay the foundations for recall training. So a nice, easy game that I like to play is I'm going to chuck a piece of food for him to go and find. Go find. If he sees it, let's try that again. Go. So once he's got that piece, noodle. Good boy. I'm going to call his name, tell him good boy, and then give him a tiny little piece of treat when he gets back to me. So again, I'm gonna try and make sure he sees it this time. Noodle. Yes, good boy. And he gets that treat when he comes back. Ready? Noodle. Yes. Good job. And this is teaching him that when he hears his name, great things are gonna happen. Not only does he get a treat for coming to me, we're also gonna play a really fun game where he gets to find the treat and then come back again. Go get it. Noodle. Yes, good boy. And that yes is just telling him exactly why he's getting that treat. Go get it. You didn't get it, where is it? Go find. Noodle, yes, good job. And we can see how urgently he's running back now because he's like, yes, my name means great things are coming. Ready? Noodle, yes, good boy, good job. 
Well done. Now, a really important thing with puppies is not to overuse their name. It can be so tempting to just go around going noodle, noodle, noodle all the time. But the more we use their name, the more likely they are to ignore it because it just becomes white noise. Remember that our dogs are always trying to figure out what's important and what they can ignore. Whoa! And if they just realise that actually I hear that word all the time and there's never ever a consequence to it, nothing good happens, it just becomes background noise and they learn to ignore us. So we always want their name to mean something really positive. So again, the treat's gonna go away. Noodle, yes! And then he's gonna come running back for it. Cause again, he's learned, okay, noodle means great things. You lost one. There it is, there it is. Good job, well done. The next thing I really like to teach small puppies is a touch, which is a nose touch to the hand. And this is really useful because it teaches them early on how to interact with hands coming towards them. Now, most dogs don't really like it when a hand reaches out towards them, but most people, when they want to go to pet a dog, will automatically stick their hand out. So if we can show them that hands mean great things for them, then it makes everything so much easier. It's also a really great way to help with puppy biting because if he thinks, okay, I put my nose to your hand instead of my teeth, it's just gonna help to reduce that biting. So this is a nice, easy game. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my hand out. Yes. And as soon as he touches it with his nose, I'm gonna mark with a yes, which lets him know why he's getting the treat. And then he gets a treat. So again, yes. Whoa. Yes. Now I'm not telling him what to do just yet, I'm not adding a word to it, I'm just waiting. Yes. And even if he goes towards my hand but doesn't quite make it, I'm going to give him a little treat for trying. Because at this age we want them to be really motivated and really excited to work with us. Yes. Good job. And we can see as well, even one treat like this is going to last us a long time because I'm breaking it up into really tiny pieces. So again, Yes. Oh, good job. Yes. <laughs> and you can see how excited he is when he knows he's got it right. And that's where our yes comes in because it shows him exactly why he's getting that treat. So again, yes. Because if I wait for him to come back to me before I give him the treat and I don't say anything, he's gonna have no idea why he's getting that treat. So I want that yes to happen exactly when he touches his nose to my hand. So again, yes. Good job. And now he's getting the hang of it. Now is when we can start adding the word. So just before each repetition, I can say the word touch. So again, touch. Yes. Good job. Touch. Yes. Now you can see even when he doesn't do it straight away, I'm gonna wait and be really patient because at this age, it's a really, really good habit to build to allow them to problem solve rather than just repeating myself or helping him out. I'm gonna wait and see if he can figure it out. So again, touch. Yes, good job. And we can see he got there eventually and that's so much better than me repeating myself or helping him out because he's realized, oh, I figured that out on my own and that makes things even more motivational. So we'll do one more, touch. Yes, good job, well done. Good job. And when we're teaching new skills like this, we wanna keep it short but sweet. I'm gonna do a quick round then give him a break where we might play or I can just let him sniff my hands and lick them because that's what he wants to do right now. But it's short bursts, so he gets it right, he stays really engaged and then we finish on a high. I don't want to get him to keep doing it until he gets bored. So I might go away for a little bit and then come back once he's had a break and then practice my training again. But really we want to be doing this for short bursts throughout the day, not in big long chunks all at once. So another really important skill to teach your puppy is how to play. Often when we're looking at dealing with behaviours like chewing on things or biting, you can see Noodle's been very, very interested in my shoelaces. We need to learn how to redirect our dog's behaviour. But quite often when we play with our dogs, especially with puppies, it can hype them up and sometimes it can even make the biting worse. So a really good skill to teach your dog is one, how to redirect from something onto a toy, but also how to play. So I'm gonna get Noodle interested in this toy. And the key is, I wanna get it 
down really low. You can see he's going for my shoelaces instead. So I'm going to keep this nice and interesting. And I'm going to keep trying to engage him. A lot of people at this stage just give up as soon as the dog's not interested. But I want to keep trying to make it really interesting. So I'm going to keep moving it around. There we go, good boy. Ready, ready. Whoa, whoa, there we go. And then I'm going to do burst of play. I'm going to try and get him to tug on it if we can. Whoa, get it, get it, get it. And I'm going to use the squeaker to engage him. And again, I'm going to keep trying. Good boy, go get it, go get it. Yeah, good boy. And then after a couple of seconds of play, I'm going to stop. I'm going to grab a treat. And I'm just going to reinforce something nice and easy. So, yes, I'm going to do sit with him because he knows sit already. Yes. And that's a really, really nice way to stop play from escalating. Because, again, so often play can turn into, OK, I'm going to get really hyped up and charge about and bite things. But when we do this method where we interchange between play and treats, it teaches them to go from that play brain where they're very excited and interested in something to then being calm. The great thing about doing it with food is that food always calms the brain. So we can see that it really teaches them that skill of getting excited and interesting in something and then being really calm and engaged with us. So he's going to get that treat and then we'll go back to trying to play. Good boy. Good boy. Whoa. Yeah. And it's fine if he doesn't necessarily want to bite onto it straight away. I'm just going to keep him chasing around after it. And then if he does want to tug onto it, that's fine too. We don't have to always win. It's actually good to let our puppies win the game sometimes as well, just so that they stay nice and interested and motivated. Are you going for my laces again? Yeah. Whoa. I don't think you're that bothered by this one. Let's get your elephant. Noodle. Yeah, do we like this one? Whoa, there we go. That is too cute. <laughs> so I'm going to get him really interested in the toy. And again, I'm going to let him feel like he's winning. I'm not going to win every time. Oh, you did it. You did it. Because I want him to feel like, OK, this game's fun and it's fair. If he feels like he loses every time, he's probably not going to be that interested. Can't get it. Oh boy and sometimes with a dog this little you want to be nice and gentle you don't want to do really firm tugs just hold it and let them tug on it so again he's going for my laces so I'm going to bring out the new and interesting toy oh my jeans is that what you like oh there we go don't fall into the trap of telling your puppy off for everything you feel like they're doing wrong if i start telling him off for biting on my jeans or chewing on my shoes he's probably going to start to feel like i'm quite boring and we don't want that we want him to feel like hey working with you is fun you are a safe person to be around and that's why it's really important that instead of just telling them off for the things they're doing wrong we show them what we want them to do instead so again let's get that toy good boy Good boy. What's this one? What's this one? So again, now that he's nice and interested in it, I'm going to let him have a bit of a play. We're going to get really into it. Oh, good boy. Oh, good job. And then we're going to have a break. So the treats are going to come out. Noodle. Come back. Come on then. Come on then. What's this? There we go. And I'm going to get the treat to him. Yes. Good boy. So I'm going to do a little sit, which he knows already. Yes. And then I'm going to do a few rounds of that touch that we talked about. Touch. Yes. Good boy. Good boy. Ready? Sit. Yes. Good job. Touch. Yes. Well done. And if you're worried about jumping up, you can also make sure that your puppy only ever gets the treat when they've got all four feet on the floor like this. Yes, touch. And again, I'm gonna let him wait and figure it out. Yes, good boy, good boy. And then we can go back to the game. 
And that just stops things from escalating because so often what happens with puppies is they get really into the game and then they get so hyped up and so amped up by the play that they then start biting on us and then they get themselves into a state where they can't stop and it all gets a bit too much and then the only option for us is to take them to a timeout to calm down when we don't really want to get to that point. So this is just a nice easy way to teach them how to play and how to come in and out of that play brain. Good boy. And you also get rounds of training in there, which is great because did you know that if you play after training, it actually helps the training to sink in much better and they learn things quicker. So it's pretty much a win-win situation. So it's always something I recommend doing with small puppies. I know you're stuck, one second. There we go, there we go. Good job, you're free now. So remember, setting your small breed puppy up to be successful is so important, just like it is with any other breed. Remember as well that puppies are really intelligent. They can learn new things from as young as eight weeks old. And the sooner you start, the better they're gonna be in the long run. And that goes for their mental well-being as well as just making your life easier from a training perspective. So if you have a small breed puppy, there is no better time than now to get started. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like it, drop a comment below and subscribe to our channel for more information on training and behavior tips.